Welcome to Soul Moment. My name is Reverend Richard Musinguzi and I'm excited to share the Word of God with you once again. I hope we are doing well in this Lent season and I believe uh, your life is not remaining the same. Uh, today we have a very, very interesting topic uh, which we are going to reflect on through the Word of God and the topic is forgiveness. Forgiveness. Uh, our text will be coming from Matthew chapter chapter 6 uh, from verse 14 up to verse 15 uh, let's uh, scroll in our Bibles Matthew chapter 6 from verse 14 and to verse 15 and this is what it says for if you forgive others their trespasses your heavenly father will also forgive you but if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So Jesus is emphasizing this point to the disciples. When you read Matthew chapter 6, um, one of the things you remember in that text is the issue of the Lord's Prayer. Many of us are busy praying, we are telling God some of the things that are stressing us, our anxieties, our fears, but there is this thing that happens in our lives, the issue of unforgiveness. Many times we are stepped on, many times we are insulted, many times we are accused falsely by even our own friends. And so, my duty this day is to just bring you back on the right track as you pray. And so, we, when you read um, this text um, before, Jesus is emphasizing about prayer. And we are praying. And we know when we pray, God promises to answer our prayer. God is going to answer your prayer. I can assure you. I have not sought God and he didn't answer my prayer. And I can assure you if you went, looked back uh, at your journey and the things you have achieved, the things you have gone through, for sure many of us, God has always answered your prayer, has answered my prayer. And that is the good side of prayer. But there is something that Jesus kept emphasizing. And he says, if, for if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Right now, we are seeking forgiveness, friends. It's a season where we, you know, we are humbling ourselves. We are, we are broken. We are mourning. We are saying, Lord, remember me. Some of us are being tested. We're being tested by our, uh, at our places of work. Some of us are being tested by our spouses. Some of us are being tested by even our brothers and sisters. But the standard is, me and you, we must forgive. We must forgive. Yeah? And um, one of the things maybe we need to ask ourselves, why don't you want to forgive? Or why don't I want to forgive? Uh, we, we could think through about some of the reasons why people don't want to forgive. Uh, yeah, from my personal experience, uh, maybe the reason why I may not want to forgive is because I feel you don't deserve to be forgiven. Yeah. You could be there and you have the power to forgive a brother, to forgive a sister, but you feel your brother, your sister, or some stranger does not deserve to be forgiven. And so I pose a question to you. Do you did you deserve to be forgiven by the Lord? What makes you think that you deserve to receive all the mercies from the Lord? We are like filthy groups filthy rags you know all of us we are like filthy rags but jesus you know he left his glory in heaven and he came down on earth to die for me and you so that through him through the shedding of blood me and you we might be forgiven and so that's the same attitude that we should have in this Lent season to forgive yeah and there are very many, many other reasons. We, are, we have mentioned that one. Uh, sometimes you feel your friends don't deserve to be forgiven. Another thing maybe 
why we don't want to forgive is we keep records of wrong, you know. When you read in 1 Corinthians 13, when Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and he's talking about love. Huh? He says, uh, he says, love does not keep records of wrong. Huh? Love does not keep records of wrong. You find that in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13. Yeah? Love does not keep records of wrong. So sometimes we don't forgive because we have kept records. Uh, we are like, you remember the other time? How you hurt me? Now you have done it again. You see? So when you keep on pointing, you know, reminding people of their past mistakes, then there is no room for forgiveness. That means uh, even when your neighbor um, insults you or offends you, you're like, you did it the other time, so you don't deserve my forgiveness. You see? One time the disciples asked Jesus, I don't know if you remember that, and Jesus asks them that uh, how many times should, should I forgive? Hmm? How many times should you forgive? And he tells them 70 times, 70 times, 7 times. Hmm? Those are more than uh, 365 days hmm? that make up a year. So it means every day there should be room for forgiveness. Hmm? 70 times, 7 times. Forgive your neighbors, forgive your enemies. And, and you know, that is the standard that the Lord has set for me and you. And so you have no excuse uh, not to see, uh, forgive your brother or forgive your sister. And so you have a challenge uh, before you. Uh, you have a challenge to forgive. Uh, that is, uh, I was trying to get the text for you. That is Matthew 18 from verse 21 up to verse 22. Matthew 18 from verse 21 to verse 22. Uh, I could read it for you. It says that then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? You know, Peter is asking. And this is how Jesus replies. He says, Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70, 77 times. <laughs> eh? 70 dash seven times. Yeah, those are 490 days. Yeah. And so, uh, the challenge is before us uh, to seek for forgiveness and to forgive. Eh? To forgive. Yes. And so, we are seeing some of the reasons why people don't forgive. One, they feel you don't deserve it. And then also, they keep records of wrong. But uh, in a nutshell, I, I just want us to see how we, we learned well. So that by the end of this uh, sharing, at least many of us will be totally set free from the spirit of unforgiveness. But then, uh, let's go to First Corinthians 13. And we see how we can learn well, how we can come out of this bondage of unforgiveness. Now, this is my conclusion on how to come out of the trap of unforgiveness. Because you're saying, now, Reverend, what can I do? For me, I keep forgiving, things don't work out, you know. Now, let me tell you. The answer is love. Love. For God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave. Yes, you're, you're, you're giving back, not because the people around you deserve it. Some of the people are stubborn, some of them are jealous, some of them have malice. But these are people around you, these are people you live with, and God has designed it that way. So that perhaps you may seek him and find him. And so, so don't grumble that you have bad neighbors, you know, they are very complicated, and you're grum grumbling. There's a reason why God has allowed those neighbors uh, to be around you. And so like I've said, the conclusion is love. Love is the solution to overcoming unforgiveness. And so, uh, like we read earlier, we read in 1 Corinthians 30. Let's, let's, let's reflect on it as we come to a close. Because I want to end like this on the issue of unforgiveness. And let's open 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And, 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 and we conclude this issue of unforgiveness. I want by the time we finish our soul moment that 
you, you will have resolved to forgive everyone by the grace of God. And so this is what it says. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong and a clanging symbol. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Now let me pause there. You are nothing if you can't forgive. Before God, you are a filthy rug. Before God, you are empty. You are good for nothing. You are not worth to live. God regrets even why he created you. When you don't forgive, you abuse God's purpose. Scripture says in, in Genesis chapter 1, you know, there was an agreement in heaven and they said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. Friends, the brother around you, the sister around you, your colleagues at work, anybody who is around your environment was created in the image of God. So if you can understand that, you will love people. So you, you, you don't love people because they deserve it. You love them because they are the image of God. And God looked at man and said, surely this is a good thing. And so you have no right to judge your brother. Yes, they might have offended you. They might be wicked. Call them what you want to call them. But you don't have a right to conclude on that matter. Because God is the judge. And God knows how to transform people. If they refuse, that is their fault. But God does not allow us to sit on the judgment seat. You know, and conclude on issues about people. And say that one is going to hell. Good for nothing. You fool. Those statements we say. Because when you do that, you, you are provoking the anger of the Lord. And so, in uh, verse 2, I mean verses um, 3, it says, If I give all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burnt, but I have not love, I gain nothing. And so he says, love is patient. When you are patient, you will forgive. Because the reason why you don't forgive those people is you feel there is no room for hope. They don't deserve to be forgiven. You have already judged them. So be patient with your brother. Be patient with your sister. Love is also kind. Kind. Be kind. Be kind. Yeah. Be good. If your neighbor wants water, give them some water to drink. You see, if you don't forgive, he will not even give your neighbor the simple thing, water, a matchbox, talk about it, salt, huh? just because you're holding them in your heart. So be kind, because kindness can make unforgiveness begin to fade out, because you're creating room for a rapport. You can converse with your neighbor and iron out issues. Yeah? Then it says, love does not envy or boast. Love does not envy or boast. So, love. You know, when you have envy, you will not. You, you create all the reasons to hate people. You, can call, you start calling them proud. You know, they are arrogant. When actually they are not. Maybe you're just jealous about people. And so you hold them in your heart even when they don't know. Can you imagine failing to forgive someone even who has not offended you? Holding someone for nothing, you know, Jesus says they hate you for no reason. Can you imagine you hate a neighbor just because you're jealous? Yeah, or you're envying them It's not arrogant or rude. Some people they don't forgive because they are arrogant, you know I offered I gave you tuition. I did this for you. It's all about me 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 me. There is no room for forgiveness Yeah, I gave you tuition. You never came back to do this and that and that you know, you don't give to get back. You give because you love. Jesus gave many things, but we have not paid him back. And so I pray that you'll also have the same attitude uh, like Jesus. You know, He loved and he gave without expecting much back. 
and it does not insist on its own. The reason why people don't forgive. No, I will not forgive you because you see, now you have not said sorry. I will not forgive you because you offended me and you know everything is about me, me, me. I am disappointed with you. you disappointed as if you know God has never been disappointed with you. Why, why is it about me, 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 me? And so the reason why people don't forgive, could we say they insist on their own way? They feel their way is the perfect way. But Jesus has given us the way. Forgive. When you forgive, let me tell you, you're on the right track. It may sound like people have used you. Sometimes some of you are going to forgive people who have actually genuinely offended you. They have gone behind your back. They have done wicked things. You even saw it. You have evidence. But you're forgiving them. You know? Because you, you, you're surrendering it to the Lord. You're not insisting on your own way. Uh, it's not irritable or resentful. Yeah? You're not irritable. You're not easily provoked. People who are provoked, you know, they, they, there, is, there is that unforgiveness in them. But in be simple, you know, uh, have room for forgiveness and let there be dialogue. Uh, even if people offend you, always play it cool. Mm -hmm. It does not rejoice at wrong doing. Love does not rejoice at wrong doing. You see, unforgiveness is a bad thing. So the reason why I forgive is because it's a wrong thing not to forgive. Because I say the whole basis is love. When I have love, I must forgive you. Yeah. Um, love rejoices with the truth. You will know the truth. Yeah? That is, I think, John 8 and verse 32. It says, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, when you have... Uh, when you have uh, for, uh, love, you know, you're a free man. You, you are free in the way you interact with people. You are free to socialize. But some of you, you can no longer socialize. One, because you have unforgiveness. You can no longer even work well with your colleague at work because you have unforgiveness. You see, already there is a cage around you. Maybe one of the things that you need to uh, be delivered from is that lonely place. You're so lonely have the money you're driving a nice car but you're very lonely come out of that bondage don't allow resentment and all this arrogance and all these you know records of wrongdoings against your friends to to close you in a cage you were created as a social being you can't be alone no wonder we have so many cases of suicide you know i used to think it's the poor who commit suicide but I've, I've read about stories of rich people committing suicide in mansions, in castles. How, how do you commit suicide in a mansion? Some of us, we dream to sleep in mansions. We even don't know how they... We have never entered mansions physically. We only see them on Google and all this. But people have committed suicide in mansions. Where was the problem? These are the things we are talking about. And so come out of that cage of loneliness, bitterness, because when you have unforgiveness, you develop bitterness and you can even die, you know. And when you die, where will you go? You know that when you die, you're going to a very, very bad place, which I don't want to talk about. But when it is hell, but that's not your place. That's not your home. Your home is glory. Your home is in heaven. And so you should uh, begin to work out your salvation in this Lent season. Don't allow the enemy to smear you with the dirt of unforgiveness because you're a child of God. Praise the Lord. So, they're telling us that uh, love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. And then love bears all things. Learn to bear with people. Hmm? There are people who are going to do silly things, but bear with them. Maybe you are their mentor. Maybe it is you who is going to add value in that company. Maybe they have given you a very stubborn department. And you say, how I wish I was working in the other department where people are so soft-spoken, they are very organized. Me, I'm an organized person. I don't know why they put me in this department. God has put you in that department to impact lives. And so, friends, I know this is a challenging message with a few praise the Lords, but I pray that you'll be energized, you know. This is a tablet for you. It will set you free in this Lent season. And so, friends, um, finally, Paul says, love bears all things, it believes all things, and it hopes all things. Create room for dialogue. Create room for reconciliation. 
That's why he says it believes all things. When someone offends you, believe that one day they might actually save you out of your situation. That person who has offended you might be your savior. Might be your savior. You may not understand it now, but don't take your enemies for granted. Some of your enemies are your destiny helpers. Some of you have enemies, but I want you to be very careful. Don't make enemies. Believe all things. Hope all good things to happen. Because those enemies you have, they could be your best friends in the future ahead. So I want you to have faith in this late season. I know the message is hard uh, tonight, but be encouraged. Uh, the Lord understands what you're going through. I know life can be challenging when we have complicated friends. People have offended us. And indeed, Paul prophesied about this when he was talking to his son Timothy telling him in the last days people shall be, you know, lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. They shall be, you know, they shall be wicked. They shall be, you know, hypocrites. In, because we are in the last days, the love of many will grow cold. So I don't want you to be surprised that he, your own brother has offended you. No, 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 no. It's, it is because people have fallen away from the grace. But you is in the grace, friends. Don't allow unforgiveness to rule your heart. And so I pray with you, that indeed the prayer uh, that Jesus desires for his disciples is that they will be forgiving disciples. And he promises them that when they forgive, even them, their trespasses will be forgiven. And you know when your trespasses are forgiven, you have everything. The reason why many of us we are suffering is because of sin. But I invite you to a place of, of forgiveness so that you can enjoy the freedom that you are looking for. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you because you have challenged us tonight that we ought to forgive because it's a good thing. So Lord, I pray that you overshadow your children with the grace to let go of the offenders, of those who have insulted them in the name of Jesus. I pray that Lord, your peace will reign in their hearts. Refresh them in and out in the name of Jesus. I cancel every agenda of the enemy over your children, that they will never make it. I pray that they will make it in this season of Lent. And they will come out as winners. They will come out as free people who are enjoying the love of God and who have chosen to forgive those around them. I thank you. I honor you. Bless your children. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God bless you.